Have you ever wondered of loading data from cloud storage to Bigtable using the power of Spark by just passing some arguments? Stay tuned. This is Balaji. I am a cloud migration consultant with Google Cloud. Data product templates are an effort to solve simple but large in-cloud data tasks including data import, export, backup, restore and bulk API operations. The technology under the hood which makes these operations possible is the serverless Spark functionality based on Google Cloud's data product. Without having to create them from scratch, we can run typical use cases on Dataproc serverless using Java and Python, thanks to Dataproc templates. With the help of these templates, we can simply customize and run common Spark workloads. Now we will focus on GCS to Bigtable Java template. This template is written in Spark, which is open source and can be customizable based on the requirements from the user. These are driven by configurations and are ready to use. This offers the user the power of Spark and customizing for advanced use cases is super cool. One of the common ETL tasks is to load data from GCS to a low latency database like Bigtable which can power up any UI or real-time query platforms. This template supports CSV, Parquet and Avro file formats. These templates are ready to use Spark workloads and they can be altered with connection parameters for use cases with identical requirements and the development can be completed in no time. Here is the flow of data in the GCS to Bigtable data prop template. The source is the GCS storage which holds the file to be loaded into Bigtable in a storage bucket inside a specific folder. As of now, the template supports loading of CSV, Parquet and Avro files. The file has to be uploaded in a folder and the exact location has to be passed as an argument. Unlike other storage things, Bigtable is quite different. It is known for its low latency performance and the overall query performance depends on the row key. The data is stored as columnar storage format and each row has its unique row key. The beauty of this NoSQL lies in its columnar access of data. So each column can alone be accessed with its row key, column family and column name. Behind the hood of this template lies the power of Spark provided by Dataproc Serverless. It accesses the data in GCS and loads the data in a parallel fashion at a much faster pace as it's driven by the number of worker nodes which are handled internally by Dataproc Serverless. Once the batch job is started, the Dataproc Serverless looks into the job configuration and it starts the Spark session. Right now, there is no logic written for any transformation. It just loads the data into Bigtable from GCS. But in case of any enhancements required, it can be carried out in no time. Here is a sample CSV file and how it gets loaded into Bigtable. As the row key needs to be unique, the first column in the CSV file is taken as the row key and it gets loaded. Further, the header details are taken automatically as the schema. The column family is specifically passed as an argument. As we see, the various values gets loaded as columns under the given column family and the first column of the given row is the row key. Here is a sample Avro file and how it gets loaded into Bigtable. From the input, we can see the schema has a timestamp, tweet and the username. Since the username is the first level value in the input, that's taken as the row key. The various values get loaded as columns under the given column family. The column names get populated automatically from the schema. Here is a sample parquet file and how it gets loaded into Bigtable. From the input, we can see the schema has continent and the country array. The continent is the first value and it gets loaded as the row key and the array of countries gets loaded as a single value. Further, there are two rows with the same row key. So it gets loaded as two separate set of columns under the same row key as it has to be unique. In the previous video, you would have seen it's a three-step process to execute. First, to clone the repository, get the authentication credentials and to execute the template. Now, let's focus on the third part and how to execute the template. First, create the GCS bucket, then the input folder and upload the required file into that folder. Doing this in a console is the most preferred one. Next, create the Bigtable instance if it's already not available in the cluster. Then within the instance, create the big table table with the required column family. This column family has to be passed in the argument. Next, set the configuration parameters like the GCP project, region of execution and the GCP staging location for internal use to upload the jars and temporary storage. Then pass the arguments and execute the template. GCS to Bigtable Java, post which the batch spark job has to be monitored. 
Here are the list of arguments that needs to be passed while executing the template. The major ones are the location of the input file, the details of the big table instance, the table name and the column family. The respective project IDs of the GCS storage and the big table also needs to be passed. Here are the commands used to execute the template. The ones in red shows the configuration parameters that needs to be set one time during the session. The start script will trigger the template and the name of the template has to be given along with the required arguments. Once this is submitted, it builds the jar, copies to GCS and then triggers a batch job in the Datapack serverless. In this section, we will cover hands on on the GCS to big table template. First, we will start with the Cloud Shell and after authentication is done, let's clone the Dataproc template repository into the Cloud Shell. Then, let's traverse inside the folder, check the branch details using the git status, ensure that we are in the main folder. Let's ensure that we have the required input files in the input folder of the GCS packet. For instance, let's take a CSV, Airflow and Parquet file. Let's see how the input CSV file viewer stage 2 looks like. It has a header and some records. Now we can enter into the big table instance in a big table and let's create a table if it doesn't exist. For now, use the table bus hyphen data. Please note that the column family needs to be given correctly while creating the table. Now let's read the contents of the bus table uh, bus uh, data table. Uh, you can see there is no data in the table. You will proceed with the configuration parameters to set up the configuration parameters like GCP project, region, GCP staging location. Once the basic setup is done, next is our template specific processes. Populate the required arguments for running the template like the location of the input file in GCS, its type, uh, then the details on the big table table, instance and the column family. Copy the whole command for executing the template then the logs of the Spark job execution are shown here. Once the job gets completed, it clearly provides the details of the completed job along with the additional details. The data proc UI shows the logs along with the number of executors that are running in the backend. In case if you need to view the detailed worker level logs from Spark, it can be seen from the view log section. Now let's check how the data got loaded into the big table. In our input, we have two records that we can see that two records got inserted into the big table. As shown in the example previously, we can see the schema got updated into the column names automatically. With this, we are coming to an end for the demo of GCS to Big Table template. We are happy to seek your feedback, queries, and suggestions based on your requirements and usage of these templates. Please feel free to reach us at dataproc-templates-support-external at googlegroups.com. Cheers! Have a great day.